every single family carries at least one curse that is passed on from generation to generation until it's broken. We came on earth to experience our divinity on this different plane. However, the density of the entities that were here that created this plane, that even called and invited us, it was to suck up our energy. What are the forbidden acts, rituals that you do that keep cursing you and basically keep you poor? I'm Miss Pravala. People call me MP. I'm going to make this potion to assemble this potion today for this client as I'm going to explain, you know, how I'm making her potion, but also the acts that are actually forbidden in spirituality. Even if you don't believe in magic, if you don't believe in occultism, if you acknowledge that there is an esoteric aspect to life and that there are such laws as the law of attraction, even if you're just a mindset person, it still applies to you. You have to understand that our body has a multitude of layers. It's a physical body, but then there are different layers, you know. Everything that you do is going to have an actual consequence in your lived 3D physical material experience. You have to know that wherever you are right now in your life, you deserve it. Period. I'm not saying that you want it some of those circumstances to happen to you. However, you were born, you incarnated, already having the weight of your family history. Every single family carries at least one curse that is passed on from generation to generation until it's broken. You're not the exception. I wasn't the exception and none of my clients are the exception to this rule. So it is part of our spiritual constitution to actually show up and actually the the reason why we are born is to take a shot at being the person who breaks the curses and also breaks our own i mean the first incarnation was really to live to expand as gods and goddesses on this plane those who preceded us or those who had incarnations early on you know, you know about Atlantis, about Lumeria, about all kinds of the existence of people who even remember, people who are not initiated, but who remember their existence in different lives, different planes, etc. It was to live as our version of our divinity, just the same way you would travel, say, I'm traveling to Brazil, it's still me. However, maybe. The way Brazilians live, the way they eat, the way they speak, their mindset somehow at some point is going to change me. Not necessarily actually in good or bad and in spirituality, there's no such thing as good and bad. It's just what act do I perform and who are the invisible entities I am consciously or unconsciously invoking by performing that act just very simple so we came on earth to experience our divinity on this different plane however the density of the entities that were here that created this plane that even called and invited us it was to suck up our energy to basically use us as earth being some sort of concentration camp, a spiritual, where we could be used as battery, as oil, you know, the same way you pump gas at a gas station if you have a still traditional type of car where you have to go and plug, whatever. If it's even an electric car, you're still pumping energy. Energy is always going to be your most expensive asset. That is why when you need to claim your energy, you have to exchange it with the energy currency that money is. 
So you incarnated and then you failed because the experience of earth was dense. So you went back and said, okay, because you are in the wheel of earth and the rule is to incarnate until you awaken, you had to go back to clean the karma that you accumulated from the acts, decisions, the mindset, the feelings, the emotions that you felt from the trauma you experienced, but also the trauma that you made others experience. You incarnated and you reincarnated. As time goes by, a multitude of incarnation and reincarnation and new beings also incarnating, creating the notion of family and community, you are now carrying several types of curses. The first one, like I mentioned earlier in this video, is your bloodline curses, your generational curses. This is a soul contract that you make saying, I'm going to be the one who's going to break it or the generation of the ones who are going to break it. You sign that contract saying, okay, we're still, we're giving it a chance. But you're also carrying some of your past life karma curses which basically are things that you did and that you're saying, I'm going to fix it. I hurt others and I got, I allowed myself to be hurt because I was not aligned in my divinity. So I'm also taking upon this soul contract with myself to say that I'm going to do myself right, so to speak. And I'm signing soul contracts with a multitude of beings. Beings from my family, from my lineage, beings from the people that I have met in past lives who are going to play different characters. I'm also signing, renewing those vows with them to say, you're going to be a master in my journey to teach me that I need to expand, awaken, take charge, get back on my throne as a goddess. So this is the charge that you get. However, when you're in your mother's womb, what's going to happen is that you're also going to take to receive the memories in her DNA of her past life karmas as well, on top of the bloodline karma. And from the seed that your father planted in her with the intercourse, the sexual mating, which was for the most part non-sacred, you're also carrying the curses of the seed of your father. So this is you having your own issues to solve, but then you have those of your parents and then those of their parents and those of their parents. Both generational curses, but also karmic curses. Where are like a software, like a computer that keeps the memories, the archives on our body. So in the womb already, especially if your mom has not protected her womb when she was pregnant, she hasn't gone to a spiritual healer who's going to ensure that this portal, your Swadhisthana chakra, your sexual chakra, where you, where she created you when she's creating you, but also where your soul is now plugged to ensure that your soul is not captured by outside forces. People who are going to come with actual intent on the harming spirit, spiritually harming you. People who are creating trauma plugs by hurting your mother. People that your mom may be hurting as well. If she is angry easily, if she has bad, uh, you know, she's in a bad mood all the time. She's a person who just likes to bully other people, I mean, it does happen. You also are vulnerable to the entities, the spirits that make her do that because you are a vessel that is going to be either a temple or a haunted vehicle. There's no other, there's no middle way. There's no neutrality. There's not, it's, it's one or the other. As per the law of attraction, you can only attract what you are. So if you have entities of low vibration who are going to keep you a victim of being triggered, of being angry, of being envious, of feeling like a victim of 
honoring your suffering of poverty, putting that on the pedestal, always thinking, yes, there, you know, this is happening to her because she's rich, I'm poor, so this won't happen to me. All of the vows that you keep renewing with your speech, cursing yourself, giving them even more energy, the plugs to the entities or egos that are attached to you because they need your energy to survive, right? What happens is that you grow up carrying all of that, not being aware of that, and then you start acting based on the curses that society imposes onto you, whether they realize it or not. Religion, your parents need to have you be a certain way, to conform, to be a good person or not, okay? The most important ones, which I want to touch upon today, sexuality. And nowadays, promiscuity being something that is not just encouraged, but put on a pedestal, venerate, like promiscuity as a, as a woman, it's your right to use your body to be a full woman. So sexuality is going to be something that is highly accessible very fast and very young. I mean, you can say, you can argue that it was always the case, but people back in history married younger. The moment you were able to conceive, you were a woman. So it's not the same type of promiscuity. Was there trauma inflicted by certain people of power or people of higher authority? Yes, there was. That's why we talk about a toxic masculinity, which is nicely becoming a toxic femininity. If you ask someone like me who has four eyes and not two. So my hands are purified. Let's start and actually I want to use gloves because because I'm asked to use gloves, quite simply. So you are encouraged and you're exposed to devious sexuality, meaning that it is unsacred, but it is considered to be the norm because your physical body has hormonal needs that based on Freudian thoughts, you are supposed, you are normally, your body is meant to be active sexually and explore the fantasies of sexuality. So just from personal story, and actually then I will get to why I'm speaking about this as it pertains to my client. One of my daughters had access to, uh, she plays chess. She's in, the, she was, she's no longer, but she was in the chess club of her school. She was also the president of the chess club of our district. So she loves playing chess. It's, she's very good. I would actually, I wouldn't know because I'm not a chess player. She's tried to teach us, but apparently we're, <laughs> we're below her, uh, when it comes to this, uh, this activity. So she plays chess. She used to, she still does, but she's playing chess online on her phone. So her phone was monitored. Her phone was monitored and she wasn't, of course, she's not allowed, she wasn't allowed to go to certain websites, etc. This is making too much noise. I'm gonna switch it up to something else. So she wasn't allowed, but she had this app where a few apps where she was allowed to play chess. And basically, not one thing. The ingredients here are very dense. This potion. So she wasn't 
allowed, but she had access to those apps. So in school, because of modern day society, they started talking to the kids about sexuality, about how, and I quote, they would tell them sexuality, um, masturbate at, at nine years old. They give them a little cartoonish brochure telling them masturbation is great. And the kids in the class, as my daughter was telling me, were like, what is this masturbation? And the people of the Ministry of Education proceeded to explain to them what is masturbation. And they're like, okay. And the kids apparently were even more puzzled and they're like, why would we do this? What is the need? And the lady, the woman who said that, or who answered, who was there, said, you do it when you're bored. Nine years old, middle school kid. She comes home with her babysitter, with her sister, because her sister had the same, her sister is 11, 11 months uh, older than she is, so they had the same access, but it was the first year, so my the two girls had access to that same sexual education class. So the nanny comes home and she's like, Madame, I need to speak to you. Madame, j'ai besoin de vous parler en privé. She wants to speak to me in, in private. And she said, I'm so sorry, I'm very confused, but Elisha and Jeza, so my daughters, apparently told Aster, walking, just walking, buying crepes on their way home and saying, Isabelle, so the nanny, do you masturbate? And Isabel, shocked, she's a woman of a certain age, she apparently didn't know what to answer. So this was, this became a discussion. Back to the video games, to the chess game. Same thing. My daughter tells me that she is, I'm adding pheromones, she is playing chess with other kids online and at some point she sees an ad of an x-rated movie popping on her screen so nine ten years old here i am having needing to have a conversation with my daughters that at that age no parents should have to to have on self-pleasuring and on positions of certain acts that should be done in intimacy and hidden because sexuality is the tantra you are opening your channels your chakras to another world to different entities so it's not nothing that's why before even performing a sexual act you need to turn the bed into a temple willing to receive the offering you also need to have the approval from your invisible family saying yes this man is cleared. He is compatible with our energy, meaning his family doesn't have curses that would harm you, etc. etc. This this has to be a consultation. You have to know these things before you just meet someone and decide that I'm going to honor this sexual relationship very very crucial otherwise you practice on sacred sexuality for this potion it's kind of weird because this week I've only used emeralds so today once again 
we're doing an emerald potion, an emerald infused potion. Because once again, we're talking about changing status and money. So I tend to use, not I tend, I must use Ruby usually for anything that has to do with um, if you are a man repellent, if you haven't been in a sexual relation with um, a sacred man for a while, if you have curses around your femininity, if you have issues with pleasure, um, experiencing pleasure or being seen as a sexual woman attracting men who actually want to commit. But I'm adding both elements here. So this potion has the element of getting her out of relationship that she's in. And actually my client, I've had a few clients who are, who have never had sexual encounters, who are virgins. And I've also had clients who had, who were very promiscuous, who are really, really sexual. And this client has only had one sexual partner in her life. And her contract with this man is now ending. And I'm not someone who's going to encourage separation or divorce unless the man comes with too many curses that he doesn't, that he hasn't acknowledged spiritually or that he's basically inflicted upon his partner. And you're going to have that automatically through sexuality. The moment you are intimate with a man, he gives you everything. All of his sexual partners that he's been with, all of their curses, it's coded in his spiritual DNA. So the more promiscuous you are, the more you multiply your partner. Someone who comes to me and tells me, you know, like someone like me, I've been with not many partners, right? More than five, less than 10, <laughs> if you wanted a bracket. Um, I'm 43. And already it is, um, and I'm including partners with whom I have not had any sexual intercourse but with whom I have, I have shared fluid, okay? Meaning kissed, because that is the first awakening of that energy, the arousal of that energy, it counts. So even the little boy you kissed at 14 years old, it counts, it starts to add up. So I added those as well, even though the first person I was with was the person I also, yeah, was when I was, uh, 17 years old my first partner so i didn't have like puppy puppy dates or puppy crushes i'm not someone who's going to encourage separation and for sure i'm not going to going to encourage divorce because you may divorce physically from someone but you have not divorced you have not divorced spiritually unless you've cut the links so it's even worse because now you go on to wanting a new partner you want to be in a in a new relationship in a new committed relationship but you're carrying you're carrying those curses you're carrying that energy so you're coming even if you can attract a man who loves you in a future relationship you're coming with that trauma with that emotional baggage you're going to be triggered by the same thing and you may repel him um, the same way or you may attract trauma that is going to awaken your trauma and trigger your trauma feeling even more isolated so you know the same way wealth loves company it's the same way misery loves company my client also she sent us a message saying that she wanted to remember her dreams and basically wanted to open her third eye portal her ajna 
it's very dangerous to do that not everyone is meant to open their third eye because the moment you start seeing entities you see all types of entities not everyone is everyone's body is made to do that and if you want to do it if you feel called to do it because she is a reiki healer so she wants to have those senses awakened it's going to take time we're going to do it slowly as we remove the low vibration energies from you aka entities from her then we will usher her to be more open to remember her dreams to use that also in her field as a reiki healer because when you do any type of energy healing you know someone like me like i have reiki the protocol you know doesn't work for someone for people like us because we are it's innate for us the fact that you have to learn that craft and learn the protocol given by someone else shows that it is not in your lineage to do that but that is not my choice it's her choice to do it so she will fulfill that karma hopefully she will transcend that and become an actual healer by calling upon her own entities who are going to give her the protocol because even following something like Reiki puts you in a box so you may help heal people because the energy is intelligent you may become that channel through which they they go to receive the healing that they need to but it takes so long and it keeps you in a, a cycle of forever healing you come to someone like me when you want to expand energetically and you do moaning to manifest on a daily basis so you become your self healer so you you get to see and experience your trauma and release it because you're already surrounded by the people in the invisible who are going to remove that the trauma the memories and transmutate them people who are healers especially in those types of healing protocols remain in the healing cycle you will forever be healing. Haven't you seen, noticed that a lot of healers and majority of even fortune tellers, tarot readers, etc., are not rich and you see more and more of them awakening to that because they see that on social media, they see that on, on, uh, on YouTube and on movies, whatever, that, oh, I can just learn tarot and read people. Yes, you have the capacity because you have that third eye. It is part of your energy center to be able to perceive, but for you, everyone is supposed to be a self healer. Not everyone was anointed, appointed to be a healer to other people. So it is one thing to use that as one of your medium or one of your media to provide counsel to people, but be careful not to keep them in the loop of victimhood. All of those pseudo S manif what is your SP doing? What is your twin flame doing? They themselves are slaves to that protocol, to that entity of fortune telling. They're also a gas station through which that entity is feeding themselves because a lot of them, I like to think, are honest when they talk to you about your twin flame, your whatever, because a lot of them have experienced that, that lie that the twin flame is. And and I'm also to blame because I have had hundreds of women throughout the years who have talked to me about their twin flame. And because they were not ready, I did not pull them on what this is, a twin flame being Kundalini awakening. It is a process of you meeting yourself, meeting your God and Goddess self, awakening those Kundalini spirits and marrying them in the astral and in the other dimensions experiencing the sacred union within yourself the twin flame you think of that is triggering your trauma is a demonic entity i'll make a video let me know if you want me to make a video on twin flames what they really are in the comment session so i will make a master class about it okay all of that also you can find in my spiritual course because that's when i really go i dig really deep so needless to say this situation is different Separation is inevitable. My client needs to expand. She needs to claim her money, her love money, but also her money lover. She needs to claim the wealth that she's supposed to have here. My client is not someone who's going to become a gazillionaire. It's not part of her path. 
but her path is to live extremely comfortably, is to be seen as money. Her path is for people when they see her to know that she has money, to claim that link, that relationship with her money lover and her money energy, and to experience that through self-realization. It is part of her path. It was denied to her because she experienced black magic and she experienced attacks and also through the unsacred practices that I talked about because in our consultation, because we have one consultation when you purchase the custom potion, what happens is that I, I, I hear things and sometimes I'm going to ask you questions already knowing the answer. I talk to her coincidentally about an unsacred practice that she was doing. And I said, not even asking her if she was doing it or she, if she had done it in the past, I said, stop doing it, period. No questions asked. So it was a done deal. And that is why this conversation about forbidden acts and being, performing sacred sexuality. And this is the point of a potion. You come to me because the potion is going to protect you. I'm going to tell you which rituals you have to do in order to receive, prepare to receive the potion, physically receive the potion, what you have to do sometimes in your home, if your home is clogged up. And really, you would be surprised of how many people consider themselves to be spiritual and how haunted their place is because they're using protocol that is not theirs, that is not attracting their beings, you know. If I use sage, for example, to cleanse my place, I would sage myself to suffocation. My entities, my divine entities, don't know what sage is. It is not their origin. There is no blood related to sage. So it will just be me making my house smell like burnt sage, period. Thankfully, I never liked the smell of sage. So I listen to myself. It's not something that I use. So you have to know. If I sage my place, my studio or my home to cleanse the space, it would just be the same way as having a priest performing an exorcism in a church, doing something that shakes a little bit the spirit or the ghost, that spirit, you know, releasing, removing themselves from the body, waiting for you outside of the church so that when you're fully like oh, in trance, happy and in full devotion of a priest who does it intentionally or unintentionally most priests know the occult secrets you walk out everyone's happy cheering that's a great pastor that's a great priest he's a great exorcist there are not that many great exorcists. there are some but they're not that many especially today so everyone is cl like clapping happy your pastor, your priest is a big star now. He's known for that. Oh my God, he's great at that. I saw that person shaking, their eyes rolled back. You're happy. He performed exorcism. Then you walk out and that spirit goes back and pew, inside of the vessel that they claimed as theirs. You belong to them. It's the same thing that you're doing when you're using a protocol that is not yours. You need to do things with knowledge not just watch videos and feel like it's one size fits all for everything. I'm going to use cinnamon to attract money or whatever. It would be a known fact that just by blowing on cinnamon in front of your door at the full moon every month, people become multimillionaire. It would be known. It would be cinnamon's price would go really, really high. Kitchen magic gives you kitchen results. Short-lived, you do a lot of magic or you go to a, a, a witch that does that. Kitchen magic, she may be good at it, she may be beautiful to look at, she may be mysterious to look at, mystic, mystical. However, she is going to give you the result that she herself has. She's doing magic in her kitchen and she's providing you $200 services to give you $200 result, period. Money is the energy currency. You need to sacrifice as much as you want to receive. You sacrifice physically by the 
waking up early sometimes to do some invocations, reorganizing your life on a daily basis to meet your goddess and to transform into her. You pay the price by the money you spend when you come to someone like me or someone, another healer or an initiation. It is the price to pay. Even a text, a book of spell that they use in religions like the Bible that they've transformed so many times to cater to, even they were not able to remove that. The fact that you're supposed to pay the price to receive the blessings. It's just a fact. There has to be sacrifice. The, all the, and you may think that the pain that you've experienced is sacrifice enough. No, if you're not awakened to that, if you're still in your demonic state, being a victim, being in your triggers, no, that doesn't count. What counts is your intentional sacrifice to say, I'm now changing, I'm transforming into her. It comes with a little bell to shake the energy. So let me put it here. I'm going to end this video because at this point, what else is there to say? So I'm making her incense that she's going to burn to activate her potion for her because roots and resins and plants used for incense can be can stain. I'm also going to use this. Um, it's a uh, garlic skin. I'm not putting too much for her because she's already going to do 12 days of bath. I'm going to tell her what to do exactly doing the bath. So this is prior to receiving the potion. Now, So this is the incense that I'm very generous these days. I'm doing a lot of gifting. And she's also getting this. This is traditional dried tobacco. Not the rolled cigars, but tobacco. Her ancestors requested that. So we're putting this for her. She has a lot of strong, very strong masculine ancestors as guardians. I'm going to package it later on, you know, add the labels and whatever. I'm also going to add the ribbon later on. I'm not gonna show this here. Now this is her bath. This is her attraction bath. And of course, all the ingredients are approved by spirit. Approved by her goddess. And they've been blessed, anointed, and all of that good stuff. Now I'm adding yes, that's the one.
Fertig. Big ones, big power beads. And of course, she's gonna get five big ones. And that's her bag. And that's it. If you want to keep something out of this video, be stingy of your sexuality. Identify what are the sexual acts you've performed and with whom you've performed them. You want to know more about it? I have a spiritual course. If you don't, good for you. If you already knew that, amazing. If you are interested, and investing in your self-realization and the experience of a life of goddess, someone who is entitled to have it all and someone who gets to transform her life by using potions and performing ancient rituals. Contact me. She's also getting, of course, my planner. So, this is a planner that I wrote actually in three weeks. It's over 400 pages and it is an actual manifestation tool. My goal is always to provide a holistic approach to transformation. Coming from someone who's done, that means, you know, 12 initiations or cult initiations, okay? The ones that I've always talked about are the public ones. Santeria, Buti, Mumbayano, the Buffalo initiation, the Tantra initiation to Lalita, the, the initiation to the Temple of Ishtar, the Temple of Isis, etc. So they're okay. The Magdalene uh, initiation. One thing that was always puzzling to me, and early on because I started practicing to the spirituality over 20 years ago, 21 years ago. What happens in an initiation is that the initiation is a process. So you get to the place, to the temple, you get prepared for the, for, for the initiation. You bring whatever you need to bring. You do the initiation. It may take three nights, it may take two weeks, it may take one month, it may take two months, three months. I did the Hindu temple three years, okay? That was an initiation. I did Ayurveda also, which was part of my Hindu you know, initiation. So you do that, but the initiation is an event. It's meeting your guides. It's cleansing your body to be able to meet your guide and change your life. Their, your guide at the end of the initiation is going to give you a specific series of informations or your madrina and your padrino or your godmother or your godfather of spirituality, of that spirituality, is going to give you the guidelines. This is how you're going to do, how to you're going to do life for now on, especially when you ju were just reborn as a spiritual person, stripped off of the curses or the beginning of sp stripping off the curses that that initiation can take care of because some initiations can take care of some curses and not others. If you go to something that relates to your ancestors, it has nothing to do with something that relates to your money lover or your goddess or your whatever spirit entity. It's very specific, right? So what happens is that once you finish that process, however long it took, you're left kind of, you go back to your old life and you're lost. You're now a new person. You're supposed to be a changed person. You're supposed to receive the guidelines from your spirits, right? From your goddess, from your whatever, from your entities, from your ancestors. They're supposed to speak to you through whatever protocol was taught to you or shown to you during initiation. But what happens is that you go back to your old habits. 
Imagine you're surrounded by people who smoke cigarettes or you're surrounded by people who smoke other things that bring your that make you mellow and not aware and not fully functioning fully being in your free will all the time or imagine you go back to people who eat fast food you know which is dead food you go back to your old place if you're lucky that initiation cleansed the place you know they came the people came and actually did that for you or they told you this is what you're going to do to your place because again to use the example of exorcism, what happens is that you're supposed to be a new person and your goddess, like your body is not ready to receive your goddess, which takes time, okay? For her to get back inside of your body, to take full ownership of the body that belongs to her because you are your goddess's avatar. You're not a cursed enabler's um, body, okay? You don't belong to low vibration. That's why you need to self-realize. That's what we talk about dharma life purpose prophecy things like that so you go back to your place that goddess cannot be in a place that is still full of all of those low vibrating things she stays at the door until you resolve your home problems your home situation and if you wait too long that initiation is no she just goes back you had an amazing experience you had some knowledge but the knowledge is not continuous so long story short this is why i made this because when you work with someone like me i do soft initiation i help your body becomes a sacred temple but you need to have new habits you need to organize your life so you can optimize whatever time you have left on earth even if you show up to me at 16 or 17 years old if you have 60 years on earth you want to optimize those years to be in your goddess life to be thriving and fulfilled it takes adjusting, incorporating new rituals, new routines. It takes adjusting people who may be living with you or part of your community, your friends, your family, your coworkers, your whatever, because you don't want to be an aggressive activist spiritual who now goes and bullies people because they are not spiritual people. You need to experience a soft transformation that is lasting. Anything abrupt will not last. It's still shocking to your body and your subconscious mind will bring you back to your curse because your, sub your subconscious mind is going to tell you, I knew what we were in the past. I don't feel comfortable with this new person that you want to become and that is now, you know, triggering and triggered because you have some sort of false higher morality stand you need to have a guideline so instead of having my clients come to me with a lot of issues and you know some clients of mine they were with me for like three years saying like you're still on the potion for three years or they took some of my digital products and i'm like how have you not really changed drastically it is because they did a meditation but then they lived their regular life they did not change their mindset and their habits that is why this is going to be your no excuse. I actually say that on social media and uh, TikTok, whatever, and Instagram. I am in my no excuse era. This is what you should tell yourself. And this is the tool that I gift my clients. You can also purchase it, of course, separately. When you purchase it, it doesn't come as a book, okay? It comes as a PDF that you print yourself. You can print it out. Mine, the first version I showed you in a different video, I, I can't stand and like go to the other office uh, to get it. but. You know i sent it to the printer he printed the document for me he did like the binding for me and i showed it in a video and i showed it on my TikTok and my instagram so you will use that it is my self-proclaimed most expensive planner because it is not just a planner it is a transformation it is a manifestation tool okay this is all that just like a journal that you're using for manifestation with challenges every week with uh, observing your triggers with doing your weekly yoni ritual you know connecting with your sexual energy with affirmations with talking about your money talking about romance really exploring that aspect of you so you're not triggered when you add that to moaning to manifest so you moan you recreate yourself you give birth to yourself 
on a daily basis and you heal yourself on a daily basis with those tools, how can you fail? How can you procrastinate? This here, just this one is going to kick your ass. It's going to kick your ass. It's going to, you're going to be like, what? It's too much. Yes. This is a real thing. It's a real thing. I want you to keep this for this entire year. The amazing thing is that it's not dated. So you use it for 12 months and then you get a new one. If you have the PDF, you just reprint the, new, the same one from last year, the new year. So every new year, every 12 months, you start the new expansion, the new transformation. So you don't stagnate because even your dreams are going to evolve. Your tastes are going to evolve. The moment you become this manifestation machine on the roll, you're going to be thirsty for more. Your spirit is going to be like, take us to other places, discover the world because money will not be a block, a handicap, or being with the wrong person is not going to be the handicap. You're going to be thriving and fulfilled. It's called the soft life manifestation, a year of sacred femininity for financial and romantic success. You're supposed to have it all. You're not supposed to choose. You're not supposed to be a career woman who gets to repel men. You have your money, but no man, no relationship. You're not supposed to be in love with a poor man. You can, you're not supposed to honor that curse of being with a cursed man. You know, you're supposed to be thriving, living your goddess life and experiencing the goddess lifestyle on your terms your definition, your vision, your timeline. Okay. I love you. Manifest lavish imperial opulence. I'm available uh, for your potion needs. Uh, so go to the website. It's going to be written here. It's going to be in the description box. I love you. See you in my next one. Any topic you want me to talk about, put it in the comments and I will gladly see if I am the right person to talk about it. I don't know everything, but at anything that has to do with wealth, love and beauty as someone who is a spirit of the underworld of water a mermaid a venusian incarnate those topics i'm your go-to person i'm your go-to goddess i love you see you soon ciao